Tonight with Andrew Marr. It's 6.36. We've talked about the biggest political issue facing the country this week, but what about the economy? This is, of course, growth being the big issue, and in the Commons today, yesterday, the Conservative MP John Penrose, married, by the way, to Dido Harding of Covid Test and Trace fame, reminded the Prime Minister that he had been commissioned to propose 30 ways of boosting growth and competitiveness in Britain, but so far, only half of the proposals have been rolled out. So is there a treasure chest, as it were, of ideas to get the country moving? John Penrose joined me shortly before we went on air, and I asked him what measure he thinks needs to be implemented first to get growth. Well, yes, we need growth. And the good thing about these kinds of measures that, as I said, there's about 15 of them still left, um, is that they don't cost taxpayers very much. They're the kind of changing the rules of the game often to help um, to stick up for, for consumers, for customers, for people like you and me and, and, your, mm -hmm. and your viewers um, against big firms. So things like um, trying to uh, amend and tighten up some of the rules and regulations that we use to, to handle our utilities firms, energy firms, water firms, make sure customers get a better deal, um, even though uh, someone like Vladimir Putin's in, uh, been in, uh, invading in, in, in Ukraine, we might still be able to reduce the bills that we're having to pay by a chunk if we can get the regulation to work better and be more cu customer friendly. Equally, you can make some changes to something called, there's a, there's, a bit of, there's a real British success story in something called open banking, which mm -hmm. is some of your customer, some of your viewers may use. Um, and it's kind of the next wave of banking. It's something which makes everybody's lives much more easy, much more convenient. Um, and we're world leaders in it. Is this the online banking system or is it more than that? It's, it's online banking plus. It's kind of the next generation of it. But okay. it's, anybody who uses Monzo or Starling or any of those will already be using bits of this patch sometimes without even realising that they are. Um, and Britain's a world leader in this stuff. And the great thing about it is that once you've done it for banking, you can do it for energy, you can do it for online retailing, you can do it for all sorts of other bits of the economy. And we might be able to take that world leading position and roll it across into other bits of the economy. So this is really interesting. I have a very difficult technical question. What is it? Um, so it, online banking is saying, uh, ultimately, your banking data and my banking data, the information about what you do with your money in your current account mm. um, is currently held by your bank. Mm. And online uh, smart banking or open banking says, if you want to take that data and show it safely and securely to a rival bank and see if they can do something for you more cheaply, more conveniently, more easily, um, then it allows you to do that really simply and it means that your current bank can't take you for granted. So it just means more competition in banking, a little bit like you're meant to get competition in energy suppliers and that kind of thing. And, and the trouble with it, with competition in energy suppliers is that's looking a bit threadbare at the moment after the last couple mm. of years, could really do with a, a shot in the arm to give people choice um, and to make sure that if there are any better deals out there that they can grab them easily. Let me ask you about a general crackdown on red tape by government departments because there was a proposal that there should be a cap on what any government department could impose in terms of costs on business by introducing new regulations and that's been got rid of by Rishi Sunak and a lot of people in your party wonder why. It's a really, I mean, it's something which lots of people want to do. It's kind of hard to, to deliver. We had, um, about five, ten years ago, we had a system that worked that said every time any minister wants to introduce a new rule, they have to find... Two others to get rid two of. Others. And, it's, yeah. and it's not just two others, old, old rules, it's rules that are, it's the costs of those rules that you've, mm. that you've got. So you've got to get, it's two pounds out for every one pound in. Um, and that's a really good way of doing it, but we, that's kind of fallen by the wayside. We haven't been doing that for a couple of years. And we need a new process, a new system, which will allow us to get back on that path, because every pound of cost that businesses have to spend um, handling government bureaucracy is a pound mm. of cost that they are, can't invest in delighting their customers, generating new ideas, coming up with something cool that you and I might want to buy. The problems of starting a new business in this country or keeping one going are you know, igniting interest right across the Tory party at the moment. I heard Liam Fox on the subject as well yesterday in the House of Commons. We've got a Chancellor focused on inflation and the macroeconomy, of course. Does this government need somebody quite high up in it whose entire focus is on deregulation and opening up and making sure that business can operate more effectively? Here? I think that, that, yes, absolutely. That's the reason why I was asking the Prime mm. Minister himself about it. Mm. Um, I think that uh, it's perfectly doable. It doesn't need to be the only thing that, that a particular cabinet minister does, um, but somebody who's 
you know, directly focused on it and has got, uh, I'm making a couple of proposals in, as part of my 30 ideas about how we might do that. You may be making a job application as well. <laughs> I think most of the roles are taken, but yeah, we need somebody who's, who's got fire in their belly and won't let it go. Um, let me ask you about, about something else, because you were, of course, famously the anti-corruption czar mm -hmm. for a while and resigned after certain events we remember well um, during the reign of Boris Johnson. There's a lot of talk now about Boris Johnson being brought back in some form mm -hmm. um, by the current Prime Minister, I don't know, in, in some job or other. Would that be a wise thing for the Conservative Party to do? Um, I think at the moment... Um, Boris is currently still waiting for the results of an inquiry into the way he behaves by something called the Privileges Committee in, in, mm. in, in the House of Parliament. Um, I think it would be um, quite premature for any, anybody to think about him coming back until that's reported, just because y you need to make sure that the, that the process is done and so there aren't any nasty surprises mm. lurking. Um, Rishi Sunak has famously said that he was going to clean up politics or words to that effect when he became Prime Minister. Is it your view that he is having to deal with the, the after effects or the exhaust fumes, some people put it, of the Johnson years? And that's been a, his biggest problem internally recently. I, I, I don't know if it's, it's, if it's his biggest problem. I think that he, he faced a very difficult financial market situation when he and Jeremy Hunt took over and they, their first priority had to be to calm that down, which they've done pretty well, I think. Um, but yes, the, these are things which are which he's inherited. These are problems which he's, he's inherited. Um, so far, I mean, it, it was a very difficult set of circumstances last weekend, for example, when mm. he had to uh, let uh, Nadim Zahawi go. But I think he has been um, pretty strong, pretty decisive so far. But he needs to make sure, he, he wants to be the new broom sweeping clean. He needs to make sure he keeps on sweeping. As, as a former anti-corruption czar, do you think that the rules uh, before cabinet ministers are appointed need to be tightened there's actually a whole series of rules which I think we could tighten up, um, not just on that, although that might very well help, um, but also on things like um, more transparency around lobbying to make sure that, 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 that lobbying is, there aren't any cosy backroom deals being stitched up. Equally about preventing conflicts of interest from either jobs you had before you became either a minister or a senior civil servant or jobs you might go on to afterwards. So all of those could usefully be looked at and tightened, I think. And now, from a country in 